We we'll probably write that down for later. Uh, we're going to start section one. We're talking about a system of linear equations, or sometimes it's called just a linear system. And that consists of two or more linear equations in the same variables. So here's an example here. Basically, you have two equations going at the same time. Here's number one, here's number two. And uh, with those two equations, you're looking for the solution usually. And here's the solution. It's the x and the y values that satisfy the equation at the same time time. All right, so if I pick the point 1 comma 3, all right, so x is the 1 and y is 3, and I just pulled that point out of the thin air. I'm just checking. Is 1 comma 3, is that a solution of the system? So the way we figure that out is we plug it in. That's the easiest way. Okay, so all right, so we plug a 1, x is 1, plus y is 3. Huh. So we figure out, if we plug in the, the 1 to the x and the 3 to the y, does 1 plus 2 times 3 equals 7? Or does 1 plus 6 equals 7? Well, yes, it does. Wee but that only works in the first equation. We have to check both. You have to check both. So in the second equation, 3 times 1 minus 2 times 3. Does that equal 5? So this is going to give us 3 minus 6. That does not equal 5. So it doesn't work in the second equation. So the point 1, 3 is not a solution to this one. All right, the steps we're going to use. I mean, most questions are going to say, find the solution, not is it a solution. So the steps for finding a solution, you have to, we're going to solve it by graphing. And to graph it, we need to write both equations in slope-intercept form. You already know what that is. Sully and, and, and Bruss and I, we, we've taught you how to solve for y. Here's all the review sections. If you forgot how to do that, just go back and look at these. Okay? You find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So when you graph these two lines, all right, let's pretend like we graph two lines. So you've got one that looks like this, and you've got another one that looks like this, and they intersect somewhere. There's a point where they intersect. You find the coordinates of that point. And then we check the coordinates by substituting it into the original equations. Just like I did right here. Like I found a point and I checked it to see if it would work. What we're going to do is graph both and you're finding the point that is on each line at the same time. Okay, if you translate that to the equation, you're finding the point that satisfies both equations at the same time. All right, the last step we're going to do is we're going to write our solution as a coordinate point. Always write your solution as a coordinate point uh, so that no one's confused. Remember, x always goes first and then y goes second. All right, so here's the first example we're going to look at. Solve the following linear system by graphing. All right, here's what I want you to do. We're going to pause the video early. I want you to graph both of these lines on this one graph here at the same time. So pause the video, graph both lines, and then restart it. Okay, you're back. So let's see how you did here. The, uh, the first equation here, we have two over three x plus one. So I'm gonna write down what m is. Okay, remember with the slope, the slope's the number in front of x. So that's two over three, and the intercept is one. So that means that we go up one and we put a point, which will be right here. From this point, go up 2 over 3. There's our new point. I'm going to get a nice straight line. You should use a ruler so that things uh, match up pretty well. That was so lucky. That's the best line I've ever drawn on the first try. You, usually I have to uh, you know, adjust it a little bit. So there's the first, equa or the first equation we graphed it. How about the next one? This one's a little bit, uh, it's a little different, and sometimes my students get confused with this um, because it, it's so simple. There's nothing there. Where's the x? That's precisely right. There is no x. That means the slope must have been 0. All right. And then b would equal 3 here. So that means go up 3, 1, 2, 3. And we have a slope of 0. Now, remember which way 0 slopes go? Do they go vertically or do they go horizontally? And here's a trick I taught my students. If lines go horizontally, then you can spell the word 0 with it. That means it has 0 slope. If they go vertically, then there is no slope, or you can write undefined. And that's just a little clue to help you out. When the slope is zero, we're going to go horizontally here. So let's do another uh, arrow, and we'll cross that. Got to move it down a little bit. And what do we have? We have one point of intersection. It's right here. Which point is this? This is the point 1, 2, 3, up 3. So it's the point 3, 3. Now, we need to check this to see if it works. So if I plug a 3 into the first equation, let's actually plug it in and check it out. So the first equation is y equals 2 thirds x 
plus 1. What if I plug a 3 and a 3 in? So is 3 equal to 2 thirds times 3 plus 1? Well, the 3's would cancel on the right, and you get 3 equals 2 plus 1. Does that work? Yes, it does. That's 3 equals 3. So that is a solution. Now let's check in the other equation. The other equation is simple. It's y equals 3. Well, you just plug the y in because that's the only thing in the equation. It's just a y. So does 3 equal 3? That's a question mark, does it? Yes, it does. So we know that the solution is just by checking at 3, 3. We're all done with that one. That's simple enough. That's doing it by hand. You should be able to do it by hand. All you're doing is graphing two lines on the same graph. That's simple. Now the question is, how are you going to do this with a graphing calculator? And let's be honest, you would rather do it in the calculator. I would rather have you do it in the calculator. It's just, uh, it's more applicable to real life right now. We have our, our technology, we should use it. So here's how we're going to do it. Here's our example, y equals negative 5 halves x plus 3, and 3y equals x plus 5. Now, the first step, we need to write each of these in slope-intercept form. So what that means is the y equals mx plus b. Remember that? y equals mx plus b. y equals m. All right, so we're going to change the second equation and rewrite it. And what are we going to get when we do that? We're going to get y equals, okay, x over 3. Remember, we write that 1 third x plus 5 thirds. Now, you wouldn't want to graph that anyway. 5 thirds that go up 5 thirds and then you're kind of in between two lines. You don't know what's going on there. Well, how precise are you? Um, that's just a mess. So we're going to let our calculator do that. The other line, I'm just going to leave as it is because it's in y equals mx plus b form already. All right. So after you write them in slope intercept form, um, you can see in the note packet, I have all the keystrokes here, but basically you hit y equals and then you put both equations into the calculator and make sure you put uh, parentheses around the fractions as I've shown you there and then you hit zoom whoop, I went too far there you hit zoom 6 and zoom 6 will place the window from negative 10 to 10 on the X and negative 10 to 10 on the Y and usually that's a good starting point after you uh, do that you will probably see the lines intersect if you don't you might have to hit zoom out and then hit enter okay but this is in the note packet all right, and the last step is we're going to use the intersect function of your calculator to find the solution of the system. All right, so let's do that. Let's bring the calculator up, and we'll actually see how all this works. So we're back, and we have the equations typed in. If you hit zoom 6, um, this is the picture you get on your calculator. All right, and, and we have that in the notes as well. So now if you want to find the intersection, you have to go up above the calculate. So second, it's the trace button, but I always say in my class calculates because that's where we're going. Second, calculate, and it tells you the intersection. So that's choice five. You can hit the five button. And what you need to do is identify the different lines because you could have like five or six different lines on the screen. So you just hit enter, and then it wants the second line. You hit enter, and then do you want me to make a guess? And there you go. So there's our answer there. It's a decimal answer. That's okay. We like decimal answers for this. We can just do that. Okay, so that's how you do it in the calculator. What we're going to do is we're going to give you two chances to practice. You really have to practice these. So go ahead, put these in the calculator, and you sketch your graph on the little sheet for you. So go ahead, do that, and we'll be right back. Pause the video. All right, did you solve the first one for y? You have to subtract x from each side. That's going to give you negative x plus 11. So that's why in the first y1, I have negative x plus 11. In the second one, I can just type it in. As such, make sure you use your parentheses around the fraction. We're going to hit zoom 6. And let's see. There you go. There's the intersection right on the screen. So from there, it's second, calculate, choice 5. You hit enter three times. And there's our solution. 4.4. Ooh, let me look. We put that right on there. 4.4 and y is 6.6 .6, and so we write our solution as, let's get out the pen here, all right, so the solution of this one is 4.4 comma 6.6 .6. and uh, on your own what you can do is you can plug these values in, we'll just do it to the first, well you have to do it to both equations, but 4.4 plus 6.6 .6, that equals 11 and negative 2 times 4.4 that's going to be negative 8.8. .8. When you add that to this ugly fraction, you're going to get 6.6. .6. It'll work out. All right, how about the next one? All right, so looking at number two, if we zoom in here, uh, you have to solve each equation for y. So let's solve the first one. Let's divide everything by 5. That's not a big deal. 
And when we divide by 5, we get the 5's cancel. You're going to get y equals negative 15 over 5 is negative 3. And negative x over 5, we're going to write that. You can write negative x over 5, but I'm going to write that as negative 1 -fifth x. Remember, when you have x over 5, you can write it as 1 -fifth x. So this becomes negative 3 minus 1 -fifth x. All right, now, some of you are like, that's not in slope-intercept form. It's supposed to be mx plus b. If you want to rewrite it, you can, but you don't have to. You can leave it just like this. The second equation is already solved for y. I mean, that's the nice thing about technology is you don't have to rewrite it. You, I mean, the, the calculator will graph it the way it is. Okay, so let's pull up the calculator here. And uh, I put them both into the calculator, and I'm going to show you a new feature. Uh, see over to the left here? We haven't seen this before, but if you put the cursor over here on the left, you can hit enter and you get different choices. Now, right now, this is like fatty line. I like fatty line. You can get like shade, like inequalities. Remember when Sully did that? Yeah, remember that? Little circle things. And you have different choices here, but I'm going to keep it on just the regular line and the fatty line. And uh, zoom six will take you right to the middle of the screen. All right, so here's what our graph looks like now. So now what? What do we do? Hmm. What are we doing? So second, remember, calculate, intersect, and we hit enter three times. Ooh, and we get an ugly, ugly answer for that one. That is ugly, but that's what our answer is. So if you get a decimal, uh, let's round this to the nearest tenth, okay? So if you get a decimal answer, let's round it to the nearest tenth. All right, so what would this be? It says negative 8.18, so that'd be negative 8.2. And uh, what do we get here? Negative 1.4. Yeek, that's ugly, but it works. Hey, when you plug it in the calculator, that's what you get for the answer. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the calculator how to take this answer and put it into a fraction because I like fractions better. Look at these ugly decimals. So if you notice on your screen what you have, let's try to make this screen a little bigger here. Can we do that? What's that? Not that button. How about this button? There we go. There's a screen a little bigger for you. Uh, notice how it says x equals and y equals at the bottom. So I'm going to teach you a way really quickly on how to change these answers, this x and y, into a fraction. So you got to quit and go to the home screen. And what you have to use are these little squiggle brackets that are, that are above the parentheses. So second parentheses, squiggle bracket. Okay, and then find the x and the y, which is above the store and above the 1. And you have to use the alpha button. Okay, put a comma between them and put the other parentheses. It's actually squiggly parentheses. All right, so basically what this says is take the values of x and y, put a comma in the middle so it separates them, and then if you hit math, you can turn it into a fraction. Voila, those are your answers as fractions. So do you have to do this? No, you don't have to do that, but I just, to I just taught you how to do that as a little trick um, to get your, those answers into fractions. Some of you may appreciate that, and if you don't, eh, too bad. All right, the last part, checking your solution. We haven't asked you to check it too much, but here's how you can check it without even the graph. Without the graph. This is so easy, the Sully could do it. All right, so is 4, 3 a solution of the following systems of equations? So y equals 3x minus 11. So you plug in the 4 to x and the 3 to y, and then you figure it out, and you see if they're equal to each other. So in this equation, you get 3 equal to 12 minus 11, is that right? 3 equal to 1? No. So that one doesn't work. So you write that is not a solution. Not a solution. Next one, x equals 4 and y equals x plus 1. So is 4, 3 a solution to that? A lot of students say, Mr. Kelly, I'm confused. There's no y. What do I do? There's no y. You don't have to worry about it. You just plug in the, the 4 to the x and is 4 equals 4? Yes, it does. So that one works. Let's try the other equation. y equals x plus 1 does 3 equal 4 plus 1, or is 3 equal to 5? I'm kind of scrunching it down there, but no, that doesn't work. So this one is also not a solution. So for both of these, they're not a solution because it didn't work in one or the other. It has to work in both for it to be a uh, solution. So when you're doing these mastery checks, just check it when you're done. Check it. You got a couple extra minutes? Check it to make sure you're right, and that will work the entire chapter for all of these problems. 
Last thing I want to show you, this is not in the packet, but a lot of students have been confused about this. Let's pretend like I gave you two, th uh, two lines to graph. You're solving the system, and you come up with this graph here, and you go second uh, calculate, remember? And we get the intersect, 5, and then you hit 1, 2, 3, like I showed you how to do, and you get an error. It says no sign change. Let me show you why that is. On the graph, go to the graph. Why are you not going to the graph? I have to quit. Oh, quit, then go to the graph. All right, on the graph, you notice, they don't intersect, as I said. So what your calculator does is subtract the two lines, and it, and it looks for where, you know, the, the difference is positive, goes to negative, blah, blah, blah. All right, so here's how you fix it. You have to go... Uh, you got to basically zoom out. So hit the zoom button, and then zoom out is three, and you get this. It's the same. It didn't fit. You got to hit enter. Hit enter, and it'll zoom out. Hey, look at that. It's just like a space shuttle taking off. It's zoomed out. Now you can do the second calculate uh, the intersect and hit one, two, three, and it'll come up with your answer. Voila, that's how you do it. Hey, all done. No more problems. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the Hopefully, this section will be no problem for you. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. This is Mr. Kelly signing off. See you. Yo, Pythagoras. Let's kick it. Right, stop, multiply and listen. Blake is back with a brand new equation. Something with the variable x. Find the solution and you'll pass this test. Will pi ever stop, yo? I don't know. 3.1415, whoa. All these numbers set my brain on fire. Kicking it solo, just like an outlier. Trig, triangles like crazy. Sine, cosine, tangent, no time to be lazy. Drawing altitude, that angle is right. Solution sets infinity, I can go all night. Bernoulli, Einstein, you better make way. I'm the new mathematician and I'm here to stay. If there is a problem, Problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out this fear while my axis revolves it. Math, math, baby.